She's known for her iconic Seattle restaurants like Walrus and the Carpenter, Westward, and Whale Winds. But now Chef Renee Erickson is out with a new cookbook full of recipes to help you get away. She shared a cocktail recipe and a snack perfect for a warm spring day. First recipe is called Miss Wilmot's, which is a recipe that we made at our restaurant called Wilmot's Ghost um, downtown Seattle. Basically build in your cocktail shaker cocktail with two different Amaros and some Prosecco and a blood orange shrub. Essentially vinegar and sugar and juice that then can kind of sit in your fridge and come together as a flavor. And it adds a nice sharpness and also sweetness to a cocktail. Is it shrub, you said? Shrub. I've never heard of that before, so I'm super excited to check this drink out. And what is Amaro, just in case someone isn't sure? It's a large category of alcoholic beverages from all over Europe, historically. Some made with spirits and some made with wine. Typically very, like, secretive ingredients. A lot of them have, like, roots and herbs and things like that. Um, this one is a combination of both, so roots as well as... Um, blood oranges. When you put it in, you just put it all in the shaker, like how much of each? So the two ounces. The flavor usually has kind of like roasted quality sometimes. They can be kind of caramely, very herbal at times. This one's made with citrus, and this one you can see is a little darker. One and two. Yes, all the two shots. <laughs> right. And then the shrub is one and a half. I'm so excited to try this. I'm going to put in some ice, one, two of those, Just try to not get it all over me, thing there, and so then I'm going to strain it into here, which a little bit into each, and then I'm going to add some ice, I forgot the ice, so this just gets Prosecco, which is a sparkling wine from northern Italy, the last thing is it's going to get a little slice of the blood orange. Ah, gorgeous. So, that's that. Good for a sunny day, right? I'm gonna have a sip, why not, right? I mean, I'm jealous right here that I'm not sipping on that. Mm. How have you been during the pandemic? We just wanna know. We've survived, so that's the best to me. Yeah. Um, it's been really, and by we, I mean the company. I think we've lost many, 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 many loved employees. With the help of the PPP loans and the things that we've gotten from the state, it's been like life-saving really to our company. So. Yeah. Very grateful for that. You know, it's the same story. Everyone's exhausted. I think a little worried about summer and how people really behave with vaccines and no vaccines and masks and all of that. It's, you know, it's yeah. been really stressful for the staff and the teams to manage people's expectations. And we're in the hospitality industry, so we want to make everyone happy, but, you know, we've never had to do it well in a pandemic. So that's been really complicated, you know, and, and stressful for everyone. And really, you know, like definitely not safe. So you know, trying to do all the things that um, we could do to try to minimize risk and stay open. So, you know, I'm grateful. We've had tons of support, takeout, and people coming into the restaurants that have had outdoor dining through the last year. And there's been bright spots too. There's parts of humanity that gives you hope and then realities of kind of the world that we're living in kind of comes back at you. I think the biggest challenge is trying to do what we do and make people feel welcome as much as we can, but also kind of trying to like really pay attention to what's happening in the world and redefine what that means and how to, how to exist and how to treat people fairly. And my hope is that we all have a much bigger voice in what we think is fair and right and, and good for our culture and our society because it's been pretty, pretty hard. So yeah. Well, cheers to surviving. Um, let's move on to making the crostini now. So really traditional snack in Italy would be a piece of toast or a piece of focaccia or something like that that has some sliced unsalted cultured butter. So it has a nice sour quality to it. And then anchovies, which isn't the most popular thing, I don't think, for most Americans, but is growing in popularity, which I'm a big fan of. Um, these are um, a Spanish anchovy, actually, but you can get Italian as well. But they, they're not the prettiest things, but they're really delicious. And you get something that's like, you don't want to buy the cheap ones and the tin that are on the bottom shelf. So you put the butter on the crostini, and then you put the anchovies on top, and you just eat it like that? Just eat them like that with a little piece of lemon. I love Kerrygold butter, so that's what this is. So it's just, a, it's like I said, it's kind of ample. It doesn't have to be everywhere because you're going to kind of um, 
eat this. It'll probably fall apart a little bit to have a napkin nearby. But then I cut these in half, believe it or not. You can cut them into smaller pieces as well, but that's half of an anchovy. So I'm gonna do that. If you didn't want to do anchovies, could you do something else that was savory? Like, I don't know, capers on there? Absolutely. Yeah, capers, you know, like even a pesto. Butter helps with the intensity, kind of rounds out the intensity of the anchovy. And this won't need any salt. Like I said, these have been salted um, when they've been cured. You can just slice your lemon as thin as you can get it. So pretty thin. Put that right on top, huh? Yeah, just right on top. Well, that's beautiful. You can put bigger slices. So I'm just going to put a little bit more on there. But yeah, so that's. Well, Renee shared both her cocktail and anchovy chose toast recipes with us. And you can find those right now at NewDayNorthwest.com. Seriously, beautiful cookbook from Renee.